I'm getting swan's breath on my nose. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> getting hint of breadcrumbs. Burritos. He had burritos last time? <laughs> wow, your nose is impeccable. That's what they say. Comes with the size. <laughs> Welcome back to another week's episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I am your host, Mr. Perry Ritter. I don't know why I gave myself a title before that. Sir. Sir, Perry yes. Ritter. I am sitting down with a man who is known by many a name, Old Charter himself, ADHD <laughs> fishing, but I like to call him friend. Aw. <laughs> this that... is Matt Porter. All right, I'm that I'm starting to lose count. I think I'm at three friends now. <laughs> Aw, yeah, I, but, it's a big number. Are for we me. getting sad right off the bat? If you'd like to, I don't want to, <laughs> Perry. If I'm gaining friends, that's happy. <laughs> that's a good thing, Matt. Thank you so much for coming all the way down from Michigan to uh, sit in my little room and talk about something that is stupid cool. Well, thank you for having me here. Yeah, we're gonna talk about monster trucks. Um, I'm just flipping it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bigfoot crushed a thousand Volkswagen Beetles in his day. He's no, doing time for we're, it. We're now. gonna uh, be talking about Beagle Rare here in a in a little bit, which um, you just said to me you hadn't seen this bottle in months, and I find that really kind of cool. It's way darker than I remember. <laughs> I well, there's been a lot of different stuff that's that's gone into it um, mm-hmm. over the past few months, and we'll we'll talk about it a, a little bit later. Um, but first off, we do have to start off with Flying Blind. Oh, of course, because that's what we do here. At, this is my bourbon podcast. <laughs> wow, you're just jumping right into it. We. <clears throat> that's what we do. <laughs> I mean, there's no Swan here, so. Swan is not here. Swan could not be. Neither uh, Swan nor Curtis could be here today, unfortunately. I did ask them. I do not blame them. Did you send them a link to anything that I'm involved in? <laughs> no. They yeah. They made the right choice. <laughs> this smells good. I th- this has only been open for a, for a few days. It caught me off guard with the, the the first time that I had it. It caught you off guard. That's different. Mm. That has a note in there that I'm not used to, and it's right. It zinged me right in the mid palate, like a pow, and it. Mm. Oh, you know, on Christmas time, when you're probably smaller than me, like, you know, littler, <laughs> and the grocery stores have those red boxes of chocolate-covered cherries. Yes. But they're the cheap ones. They're not the ones that are like... It's kind of waxy. Yeah, they're... Yeah. They're like eight cents, and you get four <laughs> boxes. And then the chocolate melts in your mouth, and then the fake cherry residue gets you right in the tongue... That's what this is. Yeah. Fake cherry residue. Yeah. I you, are you saying that f- like fondly or? Oh, I love any. Like, okay. Yeah, that's it. Just remind. Yeah. I love, I love that stuff. So our, our buddy, um, Adam Terry described this to me as being meaty. Meaty. Yeah. Let, okay. Let me. And bef- before you, uh, you, before we actually got into the conversation, you were you right off the bat went, hey, that smells like a rye. Yeah. So I will give it to you. It is a rye. Well, of course it is. It's... But it doesn't taste like any rye no. that I've ever had before. Uh, the nose and the palate are like um, like Shaq and then um, Muggsy Bogues. Like, <laughs> like, like they're the... It's, it is what they're the same thing, but they're totally different. I was about to say I've seen Space Jam. I know what you're talking about, but Shaq yeah. wasn't in Space Jam. He was. Muggsy was. Sean Shaq Bradley. Wasn't. How about that? The gigantic tall monster. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> same thing. But yeah, that does not match. Which is a it's, really good example if you wanted to show somebody something that the nose doesn't match the palate. Yeah. Yeah, that's. You know, the nose is almost kind of dusty. I would say. Where the palates, I mean, really, it, it's it's very rich. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. 
every time that so I've had this. This is my third time that I've had it. Each time that I've had it, it's changed. Okay, I was just about to say that my second sip was completely different than my first. No, it absolutely is. My first, yeah. my my first impression was something really weird hit me in the, like in my mid palate. Second time through, it tasted more like a normal rye. Yeah, like a high proof, like a hmm. That is, it's over a hundred proof. It's a wow. It's got a nice finish. I like this. I think the finish is really spectacular. It's still going. Do you, you want to find out what it is? Um, uh, or do you want to guess first? Well, we could sit here all night. And let me think about what I would guess. <laughs> or, or I we, could just tell you. Or you could let me guess. Okay. <laughs> Let's, I told you. You are a mystery wrapped in an enigma. <sighs> I've heard that. Not the exact words. You. That's. <laughs> most people just say, shut up. <laughs> so, I think that you should show me with my eyes. Nope. I'm breaking. I just broke three things. Nope, that was my fault. And it was a plastic bottle, so. We don't have anything to worry about. We can try this if you want. It's called Low Hand, Lone Hand Whiskey. It's a Tennessee Sour Mash. I'm going to have to throw you a no on that one. <laughs> uh, it says on here, it ain't about the losing, <laughs> the winning, or the drink. Is that a song? It ain't about the losing, or the winning, or the drink. Turn it. But if you open this bottle, your room is gone. <laughs> Ding. This is dumb. It says turning wrongs into rights. Oh, that is a great... Okay, now I want to try it. <laughs> Filtered through sugar maple charcoal using uh, the time-honored Lincoln County process. Aged in charred white oak barrels bottled with pride for those deemed worthy. Yeah, we might actually have to try we this. Might, I mean, that's, fil- <laughs> that's filtered through nonsense. That sounds like, that sounds like we're going to regret that after, uh, after a little bit. You never know. It'll pro- If you read enough of the <laughs> we'll label, it'll out. probably tell you <laughs> somewhere out there. <laughs> <laughs> Warning contains ninety five percent regret. Man, this is good. I can't. And we're not it. talking about the lone hand right oh, now. We're no, talking um, about the flying blind. The flying is. blind. We're still blind, still flying. Haven't hit anything yet. Just show me. It's a town branch. No, no it's it's a branch, short branch. That's an. Is that this a, is the new riff. The Balboa, Balboa Rye. Rye. No kidding. I was actually. Yeah. That is good. It's so different, but I love it. I think it's fantastic. It is bottled and bind though, yeah. so it's a hundred proof, right? Um, and it is a ninety-five-five rye, so it's pretty, pretty wild, man. I yeah. I think that this is so. For a little bit of backstory, by the way. Uh, this was New Riff's Whiskey Club release uh, for the fall of 2019, and uh, I just got one bottle because I was like, "Well, what if it sucks?" Right. I mean, knowing New Riff, you know, they don't have a bad product right now. No, not at all. It's but fantastic. In, in, in this case, you know, I was like, "I'm just gonna stick with the the one." Sure. But I mean, you know what's really cool about that is, let's say you showed me that bottle, and sure. you said, "This is New Riff's brand new Balboa Rye." <laughs> And I would say, what is Balboa? And you'd say, well, Matt, it's a different kind of rye. And it's supposed to taste different. And I'd say, let me taste it. And I'd say, Perry, that tastes different. And you'd say, told you. But you didn't do that. You gave me something I didn't know what it was. And I tasted it. And I said, that tastes different. That's the beauty of Flying Blind. And it's also some good marketing for New Riff because they're like, told you it was different. <laughs> and he didn't did even know thing. what it was. <laughs> we- I'll take my 13 cent check in the mail. <laughs> it's, delicious. it's all about those residuals. <sighs> uh, don't know what that means. <laughs> sounds, anyway, that sounds was, messy. It look, <clears throat> we're we're not legally allowed to talk about it on here. I I can understand. Yeah. Due to binding endorsement <laughs> contracts that stipulate don't you don't mention that. <laughs> I get it. So that was flying blind. Um, before we get to what we've been drinking recently, a couple of things to talk about up top. Here on the episode. Uh, first off, if you've not given us a five star rate and review on the show yet, go do on that. The iTunes app, please do indeed go do that. That would really, really help us out. I believe you have actually. That's a negative. I um, don't have iTunes. Oh, that's right. So, you know that's what? Right. I give you a five star rate and review 
on air. On everything else <laughs> that I have. I it's above my bed above my headboard. It says Perry. Five my, stars. Five star. And then How's it says, your wife feel about that? She, it's like she's sleeping. Confused. The, yeah, it's a different guy. It's the name <laughs> above her head. It's totally fine. She likes totally it. Totally fine. Yeah. But if you have not done that yet, please go and do that. Uh, it really does help the show out. Get more people uh, checking it out. Go, filters into the or, or works into the iTunes podcast algorithm or whatever. I don't know exactly how it all works. I just know that it does. So if you would like to share that around, and if you can't, of course, review it on iTunes. Telling your friends about the show is also a great way for new people to get listening. So, have you ever recommended people go to other podcasts and leave a one star review? <laughs> you know, just to—I mean, it can only help you. No, because I want to be friends with everybody. You can still be friends. I would feel so bad if somebody went to the dad's drinking bourbon. Well, yeah, because I... they have children, Perry. <laughs> I'm talking about like I'm I'm a, like the bourbon pursuit. They don't need. I'm any. a childless married man. Bourbon pursuit. Yeah, you're right. They're fine, but I still. <laughs> I like Kenny and Ryan a lot. Do Perry a favor. Go over to Bourbon Pursuit. Leave a one-star review. <laughs> Say, go listen to This Is My Bourbon Podcast instead. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Please don't do that. No, don't do that. I want to be friends with everybody. Uh, but also, our charity campaign for November is still going on. Um, there is a link below if you are interested in donating to that. We have already actually hit our original goal of 500 uh, we are currently at 5.30 with just a few days left, of course, in November. This is actually coming out the day before Thanksgiving. So that means you only have like two or three days left in, in November. Uh, our new goal currently is $750. Uh, all that money is going straight to Movember. And if you want more information about what they are all about, you can find that at Movember.com. And we really do appreciate everybody who has already donated. Um, just a, a crazy, crazy amount of folks that have gotten in on this um but we really appreciate it and what's even crazier is some of the donations i just floored by the generosity of you guys but thank you all so much seriously and uh like i said the link is in below in the description below so please go and check that out hey matt hey perry what have you been drinking recently um well <laughs> uh, you week. listen to the show you know how this goes i man. do and i <laughs> The last week I've been drinking water, and water has been good. Um, <laughs> bottled water, tap water, filtered water. I've been sampling them, seeing what, you know, what is what. Right. Be- before, before that, I give myself a week break. But before that, I was drinking a lot of Old Granddad 114. Mm. Found, them, found them buggers on a shelf for fourteen ninety nine a piece. What? And I said... Okay, I'll take, I'll take some. So I gobbled them up one at a time. One of each, please. That's right. And that's a that's a winner right there. <laughs> I you, Y'all know how much I love Old Granddad 114. But oh, it's so good. I haven't had it in a while. Me? Well, it's been a week <laughs> for you. You're I wasn't me too. either. <laughs> <laughs> you also had, um, we, we met up at OBC Kitchen. For, for lunch today. We did. That place is... Uh, it's legit. <sighs> legit sounds the right word. Too legit to quit. No, it's... it's Legit is like... Oh, boy. Le- legit something. This is out of this world. You walk in and there's nice people with candied bacon in a cup with <laughs> peanut butter. And they're like, hey, Matt, come sit down, have some peanut butter bacon. And I'm like, okay. And then they're know like... My name was Matt. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> and then they're like, look, at, we have a variety of bourbons for you to choose from. Would you like to make a selection, sir? And uh, I was like, I love you. And you yes. Got, you also got visibly flustered looking at the, the amount of bourbons that you could choose from. Well, when you have anxiety going into something hey. and then you're like, Perry says, hey, I haven't, I haven't eaten today. <laughs> Quickly choose between... Pick out a million between a million bourbons right now because I'm hungry. Do it, <laughs> do it. And I'm like, I'll take this. And I picked the H. Taylor Barrel Proof, and it was very good. Yes, I enjoyed it. I meant to pull some of that out. Maybe we'll, we'll grab some later on. Well, but we've got plenty fine, of stuff I, to. I mean, I see. I'm tripping we, over bourbon in here. We've got yeah. It, 
Yeah. Harry's house is tilted Pretty. one one way because there's so much bourbon in one side <laughs> of the house. We have to provide counterweights. Yeah. That's <laughs> many more bourbon for the other side of the house. <laughs> exactly. I I recently have surprisingly been drinking more beer. Perry. Um, I know, I know. But you know what? Sometimes you get to change things up. Um <laughs> But I say that like I really took took a deep dive down the rabbit hole. But like last night we went out to a show, and I, I had my Turkey 101, mm. and I just got a Miller uh, High Life with it. And let me tell you, it is the champagne of beers for a reason. Champagne. Sorry. Yeah. Is that how you say it? I don't know. I didn't take it, French. Miller <laughs> Miller High Life is it's a pretty it's running rampant where I live. It's everywhere. Hmm. Yes. Okay. And the bush lattes, they say, are good. <laughs> uh, otherwise, bourbon-wise, though, uh, let's see. I've been uh, not not really venturing too far out of the out of the standards. Um, the standards mis- meaning Mr. You're, you're from Kentucky, so standards for me: Four like, Roses, Turkey. You know, listener Adam Terry did stop by um, on Monday though, and brought along. His new riff pick from uh, from the Nashville Bourbon Society, which is called uh, Slimer. Ooh, those riff from, uh, picks are fun. Yeah, I saw Riff and Morty today at uh, one of the local stores, and Barry. Do you want to try some? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, of course, but no, yeah. I mean, you know, but yeah, but no, but maybe we'll see. We'll see how it goes. There's so much stuff. I would let's have a pour of everything. Have you tried Weller Foolproof yet? I have never touched a bottle of wool, Wooler Foolproof. <laughs> Wooler? <laughs> <laughs> I saw that label and I wait. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I, my speech started sounding like my <laughs> body looks. <laughs> uh, so this is a store pick from uh, High Acres High Liquors, Acres, our local our local store. Hikers. Not two minutes from here. Not even two minutes. Well, maybe more like three or four. This Who's to say? is mine now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Uh, I knew I shouldn't hand you any whiskey. <laughs> I've got a fair trade. It is a 2003 Toyota Corolla. <laughs> but Matt, how will you get home? Do you also live here now? <laughs> I guess I do. <laughs> No, that is um. Uh, yeah, I didn't have, have a poor well. I can't do. Okay. What do you mean don't, you can't? Don't ever, America. <laughs> uh, actually, save the save the Glen Karens for our side by sides. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Because we have two side by sides. We're gonna. I felt, we're gonna be doing. I feel okay. I've got a million dollar bourbon. I'm just pouring in a glass. You let me free pour it. I'm, uh, well, yeah. That's, my little tiny bit. That's what happens when you come over to the the Pear Bear Cave. The Pear Lair. The Pear Lair. <laughs> Dang it. You are so much better with the pun work than I am. Well, I'm in Kentucky breathing the pear air. At the pear air in my pear chair, you could say I'm doing pretty pear fair, pear bear. That smells like the rye I just drank. <laughs> Not really. No, it smells like the... Yeah, that's what I did. I, I, I did a little switcheroo on you. Hit you with the old razzle-dazzle. Well, I poured it on top of the, the remnants. Oh, oh we're but... going to get letters. Um, Angry complaints from the villagers. That's okay. I love writing response letters. I don't send them out, though. <laughs> Dear sirs. Ooh. Okay. I know so for those who are just listening, obviously, I just took a drink, and it is fantastic. It's real good. I think the it's Buffalo nice, Trace Clark. may be onto something with this Waller stuff. Waller? <laughs> Maybe that'll be next year's uh From the Window to the Weller. <laughs> Maybe that could be next year's uh, Beagle Rare is Waller. I Waller think if we I think we've pushed the limits Waller. of of Sazerac and Buffalo Trace enough. Oh, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, Speaking when, of which, we have to talk about something. When I heard Will and the Grease say Beagle Rare, right before they started their uh, podcast that was sponsored by Eagle Rare. I was like, that might not be too good of an idea. 
But we, hey, we have to talk about something too for a second. Because we can talk about everything. I played. I played an awfully mean prank on you. I played a mean prank on you before that, so <laughs> I was probably deserved. You did send me a really well written text message <laughs> that I read. <laughs> I hemmed and hawed over. I went into mild cardiac arrest. <laughs> Recovered. I'm really sorry, but I could not. I I just I could not not take that opportunity. You know, and take, it was take what's very, given. It was very good. So the, I have an the, enlarged heart, which means it's probably not as good as. I mean, it's bigger, but it's not as good as other hearts. Oh no, that are in better shape than mine. It's okay. Okay, I mean, now can, I now I you really can terrify like, me all you want. I really I'll, wish I'll be, I had known all this before. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's just it's ten years off my life. It's fine. We'll 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 move on. Ugh. It's cool. It's just. And then I started thinking about it, and I was like, I don't think the lawyers, the, an attorney or somebody who was representing someone, would send would text. send me a text message. <laughs> and I waited. So okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try are to you sending? A, are you the person story. behind those phone calls, the scam phone calls too, to tell me that? Look, you have broken the veil. Yes, you do okay. owe a lot of money and back taxes to the IRS. Well, when you do owe back taxes, you're like, oh, they're on. <laughs> they figured it out. But I don't. No, so the, the text up. message consisted of me claiming to be uh, Joseph Kerr from Is... the TTB <laughs> saying that um, uh, we, we, weren't, we weren't upset with you and you didn't have to stop it. We were just a little concerned with the how you got your own label produced without prior authorization or whatever it was that I said. And uh, then a good five or 10 minutes went by without a reply from you. And I was like, I need to, I need to text him and tell him it's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Full disclosure. <clears throat> you definitely texted me back too soon because you wrote, it was, was well-crafted worded properly. You took some time with it. And I know this because, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm different, but it takes me a few days to word something that good. Well, you, you, all the stuff that you wrote behind Beagle Rare and Old Charter, I mean, that was very well crafted. Just a <laughs> blind luck. <laughs> but then I saw the no I actually I googled the number, <laughs> and your name came up, and I was like, <laughs> "That son of a mother!" <laughs> so I started responding to you with my own version of. Just my own little, and then then you were like, "I'm just kidding." <laughs> it's Barry. I was like, "Ah, I knew that," but that was that was funny. So you were gonna keep up the the ruse, or allow me to? Keep I was up just the the play, mm, I guess. I was trying to think of an object you could stick somewhere, and it, <laughs> that would sound kind of funny. It, it just wasn't. I didn't have it at the tip of my tongue. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But before that, I think the first time we ever really communicated, like more than maybe a word or two in chat, was uh, on April Fool's Day when you changed your. Oh my name. gosh, that's right! <laughs> I don't even I don't even know if you know that was me. Like if you, were, I don't think that you put two and two together. I, not for a long time. Yeah, you changed your name to my vodka pod. Yeah, which was easily my best April Fool's prank of all time, and easily your worst mistake. <laughs> Because I, so I grasped the opportunity <laughs> to force Perry into conversation with me by by beating some sort of code that was written into Instagram's database of security, and I stole. Actually, I just At changed my bourbon. Pod. I just changed my name to my bourbon pod. Oh, it was and it, the, I had a full on panic attack and when I, I could, saw that you commented on the on the post. I was like. Why does it say at my bourbon pod commented on my post? I was like, that's a good one, Perry, or something like that. And you're like, <laughs> and then there was an immediate direct message that said, um, I hey, that, buddy. I, I need I, that back at the end of the I, day. I'm going to need, I'm going to need that back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you're lucky that someone else didn't get a hold of yeah, that. Yeah, I, I know. And that's why I'm not doing anything like that for April Fool's Day again. Taught you a valuable lesson, didn't you did. I? You did. So after after I got the check you sent me, does my phone my, and, does my name really come up when you Google my phone number? Oh, it certainly does. You have um, multiple. You have other uh, 
businesses maybe or something you're a you're a veterinarian is that what it is no you are a practitioner Pro- proctologist practitioner it's different it's oh different. my my music yeah that's page. what it was but it definitely oh, said your Facebook. name and i was like that son of a gun oh you might want to have to i mean it's fine i might have to take that off anyway yeah so that was how we uh, started our so, well, it's different. Our texting it's, relationship. Was... It's a problem if you Google your name and your phone number comes up. If you Google your phone number and your name comes up, they would have to have your phone number first. That's that's true, but yeah, but I guess people would now think, oh, I can go find Perry Ritter music and I can find his phone number. Well, but I never. The good said... thing is, by the time this episode's come out, that is going to be taken off. <laughs> but I, I see. I didn't mention Perry Ritter music. I said you were a practitioner. <laughs> Which you is said, not a thing. You said Perry Ritter music. Yeah, I, I, well, I really screwed the pooch on this one. Right in the pooch hole. That, oh, no. Okay, let's move on and drink some bourbon, shall we? I would be happy to. Let's talk about it as, as well. And in particular, we're going to talk about Beagle Rare. I think I'm too tired to continue. <laughs> I think the first however many minutes we've done this, I'm, I'm pooped. <laughs> I'm going back to Michigan. I do. <laughs> I do this every week for... We got a couple of Russells. Yes. So um, go uh, the the one that says BHG Sound- in your left glass. This is actually a, a pick from the, the folks who own OBC. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, um, that I was a part of. Uh, and this other one is a Lincoln Road uh, store pick. Lincoln of, Road, uh, is that in Alabama? Yes. Did yeah. I just did I nail that? I think so. Sounds like you did. Perry, so, put that back on there. If you're going to pop a cork, Are we doing pop, it at the same time? No, pop it right. Oh. America. <laughs> you're teaching me so many Perry, things Perry, this is America, the, the only native spirit of America. You're right. When you pop the cork, a little America comes out every single time. The cork comes out, America comes out of your mouth. It sings. It's the, the least you can do. <laughs> it sings our national anthem. My word. <laughs> you made me snort, Matt. You made That's me snort. Cool. So let's let's talk a little bit about Beagle Rare. Let's uh, get down to kind of the nitty gritty here. This was so different from anything that anybody has ever done in the history of bourbon. That's not true. It is. I mean, well, I mean the history of bourbon, and then the history of the internet. Just a pretty short. Uh, thank you. <laughs> if I can get the world to say America every time a cork comes off. America. It'll it'll be like fireworks all year round. Everyone will just be like America, America, America. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a little bit of country pride up in here. There you go. So anyway, you started Beagle Rare as just what it, I'm kind of assuming was like this crazy experiment of like just trying to see if this thing could work. Um. Did it feel like that? What it felt like was I consumed so much content. No, I, like, oh, I thought you were going to say bourbon. Well, <laughs> I thought you were going to say food. Oh. <laughs> and, I, and we were both wrong. Do you see how I, I see fat jokes coming and then they just swerve? Yeah. And then they're alcohol jokes. And I'm like, well. Um, no, I, I, I consume so much content like YouTube and podcasts that – I just I I just saw in my head like a vision of people just kind of having fun together and everybody just as a communal thing like yeah at that point I knew that the community was cool but I didn't know that it was already tied together that tight yeah so basically I didn't do anything I just <laughs> just like you guys want to share more stuff <laughs> cuz I didn't know you guys were sharing everything already you basically just created content for us and we didn't even have to really think about it. The thing that we're going to have to think about the most is what goes into this bottle. So let, let's back up a little bit, because I realize that we haven't actually explained what Beagle Rare is. Ah, okay, yes. So the the idea behind it was that this Infinity bottle was going to be sent to different bourbon or whiskey content creators, YouTubers, mm-hmm. podcasters, what have you. And it started out with a certain blend in the 750 milliliter bottle. 
and I can't remember everything off the top of my head that you included in it. Um, but I mean, like one of the things in it was like a 1970s Jim Beam. Yeah, I, mean, I, I could rattle it all off. Go for it, please. <clears throat> you have time for this. You people are just driving in their cars. We listening. have as much time as we want. That's old, the beauty of podcasting. Oh, going back to old Granddad 114 and my surplus. <laughs> the first ingredient <laughs> and majority of the bottle was old Granddad 114. <clears throat> Uh, 73 Jim Beam, New Riff Single Barrel, Old Forester Rye, Stag Jr., and a couple different batches of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah. That's that's how it got sent out the door. And that immediately means that I can't add C918 to it because there's already some in there. That'd be double right? dipping. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or double, so, double dripping. So, I have, so what, what's going to happen... For me, at, at least, is we're going to drink this together. Okay. And actually, you brought the original blend of Beagle Rare 2 before it was all messed with. Nailed it. <laughs> and we're going to side-by-side these, talk about it. I'm going to record a different video, or just a video in general, where I am talking about what went into... And this will you know, kind of all be coming out around the same time. Sure. I'm going to talk about what went into my decision and what was going to be blended with it. Um, I'm going to try to get a little bit more scientific with it, I think. I'm going to pour ounce samples into three glasses, and then based on what I'm tasting, you know, or what we taste today, mm-hmm. think about what I need to do to change it. Because I I did have a little sip of it yesterday. It is very hot right now. Like me. (laughs) And I want to find some way to kind of curb that heat. And I don't know if it's going to be, you know, something sweeter, if it's going to be a lower proof or what. So I just need to take the time to kind of figure all that out. So Mm -hmm. we're not actually today going to be doing doing the, the blending, my part of the blending. I'm going to be doing that separately. Sure. That's, um, but when that's when this episode comes out, which is really just a few days from now, um, you will also have had a, a video e- explaining what all you know I did for it. So sure. I, I've already kind of gone into that and everything. Yeah. But um, I am just really excited that I got to be a part of this in general. And you know, it's gone through so many other awesome channels already scotch test dummies the podcast bourbon blind bourbon bourbon sane rather i I mean it's just it's so cool that all these people were just willing to get on board with it yeah and well it's crazy that that everybody agreed to do this are we drinking these Mm -hmm. you want me to okay I didn't know what we were doing with these. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk about them throughout. I didn't. I, you know, I kind of went weak. I, went, I like, went a little bit more peri pori. Yeah, I did but... more of a porter pori. <laughs> a porter, p o u r t e r. Porter. See, see, I can do puns too, Matt. You can. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no. So when I had sent out the initial Instagram message, I was a little tipsy, and then I woke up in the morning, didn't really. I just kind of forgot that I sent it. It was basically saying, "Hey, this is the idea. Who wants who wants to jump on board?" And then the first the first person to reply was Dixon Deadman, and Dixon said, "I'm in." I think he said, "I'm terrified, but I'm in." Yeah, something. I think that's exactly what it was. Yeah, and uh, I was like, "Oh, okay, so not gonna can't really half arse this now." <laughs> if he's doing it, then I've got to make sure that it's at least something substantial or something that's cool to talk yeah. about or something. So uh, everyone else kind of follows suit. And just if Dixon's in, I'm in. Basically, I mean, <laughs> realistically, right? Like the cool kid said, he's doing it. So we're all going to go ahead and like, the guy we didn't know was doing something. Eh, I don't know. Like I didn't expect anybody to really because. It was a, it was basically somebody who didn't exist to the community. Sure. Saying that he wanted to start something for the community. And and then but in the middle of all of it you're also becoming a part of the community too. I mean, you now have your own YouTube channel and you're producing your own bourbon and whiskey videos and content and everything and you know, I think that's really cool too that 
Yeah. You know, not only did you want to kind of provide a through line for the community to interact with each other, but now you're now you're part of us. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think you would have been too had you not started your own channel. Yeah, it was But here you are now being a content creator. I was always part of the, the chats and live streams and stuff. Um, I always had like the desire to make my own content, but at that point in my life, I wasn't in a, I wasn't living in a situation where I was able to do that. Sure. So it was kind of, a, I was put on hold for a while, but at that time it was just really cool that people jumped on board of something with somebody they didn't really know. So that was cool. So how much did you actually do in terms of prep for the blend? Like were you, did, did you kind of go back and forth with a few or was, was it pretty much like the first one out the gate was the winner? Uh, no. So the blend itself was never supposed to be in a 750 milliliter bottle. It was supposed to be in a 375. And then if you, if you read the instructions that I sent with it, it says, uh, Replace with bourbon or rye as much as you poured or more. Right. The re- and the or more part's confusing because it's a full bottle. Yeah. Halfway through, I decided that it was going to be a 750 milliliter bottle, but I was going to send it out half full. And I let it sit a while, and it, it turned out to be really good. Then I went to, I went to use the courier to get it. <laughs> I went to use um, Old Charter's uh, horse and buggy. <laughs> And he doesn't like sending liquid, specifically alcohol, on his buggy. And if you fill up a, a bottle half full with liquid, she sloshes. It makes makes quite a bit of noise. She it's... makes some racket. <laughs> and I I packed it all in, and I was like, okay, ready to swoosh, 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 swoosh. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I filled it up with the old Granddad 114 and 1973 Jim Beam. I sent it out the door and said, have fun, buggers. Good luck. <laughs> Turned out to be pretty good. Yeah, that's what everybody's... I mean, even from the first first one. Yeah, oh, and that's where the old Forrester Rye came into. So there was... That was like what topped it right. up. Right. Um, my selection to choose from wasn't that great, but I figured no matter how bad I sent it out, it was going to be... sure. I mean, it didn't really matter because that was the name of the game. If I filled it up with like, I don't know, Kentucky Yellow Bourbon and sent it out, then they'd be like, this is delicious. And then they'd just ruin it. So so speaking of Kentucky Owl, Dixon, I mean, is the, the end point for this. Yeah. That's really cool that he was even willing to be a part of it. Never expected it. I no. was I was always thinking that. He, how do I put it? He was like the. The linchpin. No, I do not know what that means. <laughs> you know David Lynch. Nope. Never mind. <laughs> if that is embarrassing for me not to know, please edit that out. Nah, it's fine. Do you know David Johnson? Ha, ha, ha. I do. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. No, it's like, hmm. Let's see here. Okay. Let's say you had to pick a basketball team. Dixon was the star point guard that I thought would not want to play. <laughs> but I asked him anyway, because if you don't ask, you, you can't say yes. And... First thing first, he ripped his pants off, threw some shorts on and a tank top, said shirts and skins, boys. Do you have a, it sounds like you have a pretty good understanding of how basketball works. It, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Five on five. <laughs> but Dick, Dixon's a star point guard and he can dribble between his legs and behind his back. No look pass. He's a master blender. So he's obviously the the most and honestly, too, he's the most approachable, down-to-earth, coolest guy you can imagine. Like, just listening to that guy talk and just his his desire to to make his product awesome. And then also his involvement with the community. 
when I see him, I think that's somebody I would want involved with something cool. Like yeah. I, I, there, there's a million other point guards out there. There's a lot of starting point guards. Sure. But I have my eye on Dixon. <laughs> He's he was for, your number one draft pick. First round baby. <laughs> well, so hopefully he doesn't like pull his Achilles tendon or something, because that would be bad. Well, I had something I, I wanted to play for you. I would like to listen to this. So um, we're gonna we're gonna turn it over to a couple of dudes here, and uh, yeah. Hello, future Perry and future Matt. Uh, this is past Perry um, sitting down with a very special guest that uh, originally I had been hoping could have met with us and sat down and talked about Beagle Rare and how how cool it is, but unfortunately. Uh, with our schedules, it didn't all quite work out. So instead, I figured I'd come uh, and do a, a podcast within a podcast. <laughs> kind of play within a play style thing. Um, guy's been on the show before. So you're lucky enough to have <laughs> past Perry and past Perry number two. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be past Perry number two. Is okay, that great. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dixon Deadman, the man, the oh. myth, the, the legend. I guess. Do you want to be called that? No. Is that too high, bro? <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll we'll just call you the town drunk then. Oh god. <laughs> if that's what everybody else calls me. <laughs> You've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is something that Dixon actually brought up too. The two Russell's picks that you guys have in front of you right now. Uh, we actually have in front of us. I love that you're as talking to them to, to you all. Isn't that this, cool? Yeah. yeah. This is really. Yeah. This is it's great. like. Is this? Are we talking into the f- are we time traveling with this? <laughs> Fucking Ebenezer Scrooge just <laughs> walked in. <laughs> the ghost. <laughs> oh, that's talking fantastic. Talking to you guys the Christmas in the future. Past. Yeah, this is <laughs> so good. This is pretty funny. Anyway, so um, the the one pick uh, with the older label I picked and uh, I picked with OBC. Excuse me. This was not my own personal pick. Uh, but the other bottle was a pick that Dust, Dustin, Dixon, and uh, and Jamie did for Lincoln Road, and I've I've not tried the Lincoln uh, Lincoln Road one just yet, but I have had the OBC pick, so I'm excited to kind of get into this. And as we're getting into this too, uh, Dixon, I had to ask you about Beagle Rare and what your thoughts on it are and why the heck were you even included in this <laughs> project wow um i should have made some notes <laughs> that's too easy yeah uh, you know how i operate you know th- i have found in the last little bit years that um as long as, and this is in life, not in, and I'm not trying to be obnoxious, but like, if you if you surround yourself uh, with good people, and you are committed to, um, you know, not not being fake, not being phony, not being full of shit, you know, if if you're, you know, if if you just if if you're if you're your head and your heart and your mind are in the right place, then, um, you know, things that you, you, you get opportunities and you, you know, and, and, and I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. At one point, I tried to scroll back and thread and figure out how that whole thing started. And I I don't think I, I made it that far. Um, but I, I, you know, I treasure, I treasure being included. Um, I treasure being a part of this. I, I am so humbled again at, at the way that, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm referenced and so like, I, you know, I, I don't, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know personally a lot of these guys although having watched some of these things 
I need to know these guys. Like I, we need to, you know, I, I need to spend more time with the, the you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm fascinated. And these people are incredibly talented and, and their abilities, their sensory abilities. I mean, it's, the, it's, it's amazing. They, you know, what they can, can pull out of this stuff is, is unbelievable. And, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Many of them are far, far, far more talented and capable than I will ever be. Um, and, and I, I truly, you know, I, I, I enjoy every step along. And, and I'm equal parts terrified and so excited about, you know, when and if this thing ever makes it to, to me. <laughs> Um, hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I, like I'm, I, I cannot wait to see what this thing is. And I am so terrified that I'm going to really screw it up. <laughs> um, but I think I, that's how everybody's felt. Along yeah, the way, no, though, I, I, like... I get it. I, but, and, and, and I, you know, I, I just wish that if I screwed it up, there was somebody else I could send it to. <laughs> Leave it to this guy. But I, 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 I can't tell you. I mean, I, what it's, <laughs> you have no idea what it's like <laughs> to, to, to go and watch these very professionally made video. I mean, th- I, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I can't, I have trouble FaceTiming my kids when I'm away. <laughs> so to make a, a, a YouTube video that, you know, and these guys, I mean, they have the bar, the setup, like everything is so, you know, so <laughs> professional. Yeah. And these guys are sitting there going, and then when this is all over, we're going to send it to, you know, and, and here I am sitting here going, oh my God, you know, um, no pressure. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay. How, how are we going to, you know, get the, like the whole fake it till you make, I'm a really have to. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I imagine too, that at the beginning of all of this, Matt was like, you know, thinking, oh, Dixon's got this real extensive collection. He's going to really be able to cherry pick from it and go. This is exactly what it needs. Knowing, like, 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 if you're a librarian, it's assumed that you know the Dewey Decimal System front to back, right? And it sounds like that's the way that you were viewed. Well, <laughs> before and this I, ever I, you know, came the around. funny thing about this is, is that without context, like without a conversation, without a, um, <clears throat> you know, this is how it, you know should work. It's like, hell yeah, I'm all in. It sounds <laughs> amazing. Um, and probably a conversation, excuse me, for another day. But you know, one of the things that, that I was, um, have been talking to, you're talking about lately is that in my, you know, my, my history and my background and, and all that stuff, you know, I, I grew up cooking I grew right. in the kitchen, I grew up, you know, working with food and, 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 um, it's so funny because food, and and you know, is 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 very, it's very scientific. I think. Sure. It's it's you know, it, and 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 you, you know, you go about a recipe. You know, and they have to be very you're very specific with a recipe. Yeah. And then you know, as you tweak a dish or tweak, you know, it's it's very specific. If you want it to do this, you do this. If you want the you know the dish to go this way, you do yeah. this. You add you know, but it's. It's, um, again, it's, it's very scientific and in my experience with blending bourbon, it's the opposite. It, it's more, yeah. it's more artistic. It's more, yeah. um, you, and we've talked some, about that. Right, right. You yeah. know, so you put some stuff on, you know, on whatever, and you kind of look at it and you think, okay, it needs this. And you're like, okay, that didn't really work. So we go in this direction mm-hmm. or, you know, and, and, and then in, in, in cooking and that type of thing, you know, three plus one equals four in, in blending and whatever, oftentimes, um, you know, you think, okay, this is, this is the, you know, the basis of this. And I want to add the, a touch of this because I think it's going to add right. some spice or some finish or maybe some initial sweetness or maybe some viscosity or whatever. 
and it and it does the exact opposite, you know, because yeah, three right. plus one and cooking is four. Three plus, you know, one and blending bourbons, you know, can be seven. You know, and I mean, like it's <laughs> or it's, negative it, two, right? Right. So, so it's you know, it's just like that. That is like the, the 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 pressure, not the pressure, but like okay, this bottle's coming. Like yeah, you, know, you take out as much or add as much or whatever, but. <laughs> Um, you well, know, you're, you're doing this. I dare you to screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing this on a much more micro level than you are with Kentucky Owl. I mean, Kentucky Owl, in, in essence, is a lot bigger well, I got than a wine stuff bottle. And I screw this blend up. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. well, trash that one. So, <laughs> I think I can hear you quivering a little bit. Oh, with <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm glad it took you till now to figure that out. That's why we're drinking bourbon. It helps out. And, you know, hopefully you'll find something that will. As as everybody keeps saying, right our wrongs with this blend. I don't even know what it's going to taste like when I get it, you know? Because oh, yeah. a- as of recording this, it's on the way from the podcast. Oh. And, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and they added... Good luck fixing that. <laughs> and they added Rhetoric 24. So it, j- just having a super old, oaky... Ultra aged bourbon uh, mixed in with whatever else this blend has been. God knows what I'm going to get into with this and where I'm going to even be able I, to take it. Did they do a video about yes. how they chose to add rhetoric 24? Oh, I don't know if they told how they chose it. Like, was there a fight or did they arm wrestle? Those two idiots, <laughs> like, you know, like, right in their new studio. Yeah, yeah it's all yeah, just yeah. no. They went into the nursery and <laughs> no, I ha- I haven't seen it yet because you know, again, as we're recording this, it's not out yet. Uh, okay. So I'm. Well, Just as curious as you future are. Future Perry, yeah, I look forward to hearing about it. <laughs> future Perry will have thoughts, I'm sure. But I, I think it's, you know, we, we've talked ad nauseum in our little group chat about how cool this project is. I, I don't know of anything like this in, in the bourbon community, in the bourbon world, where, you know, a dozen people are trying to make one great yeah. product separately from everybody else yeah it's like if you had had 12 people all trying to write a book and one chapter was written by Hemingway and then chapter two had to pick up by Fitzgerald based on what chapter one was like I think you're giving us a lot of credit you know I, I, I think I'm not trying to I mean, call I love it, these guys but yeah yeah, yeah right I'm not trying to call us you know masters or anything <laughs> I'm, but I'm, I'm kidding, saying that totally yeah I know but I'm just saying that, you know, there there is this essence of, you know, how can we all make something cohesive yeah. from I, all these I, little I will, parts? You know, I'll say this, um, that I, I don't, I mean, I've never been a part of anything like this. No. You know, I, I've been thrown into some different things or invited to pick barrels with different groups or invited to do, you know... Um, but I think, I, I think that um, you know the 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 community as a whole. And I don't mean to like generalize the the whiskey community, but it's it's kind of a it just continues to become more and more of a interesting place yeah, to live. And, absolutely, and, and 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 I don't like divisive is maybe the wrong word, but you know where everybody, you know everybody. Um, is an export uh, expert or e- everybody, you know, is an authority on this or everybody, you know, you know, um, and, and I, I tell you that like Matt and, and his idea and his vision or whatever you want to call it to, not you know not only bring together but kind of create this real life living yeah. moving you know i, I mean it, it, it's just i just think it's one of if not the coolest things in in the quote unquote bourbon world that i've seen or and and truly had the pleasure to have been a part of only because it's it's just, you know, there's nothing nasty or negative or, you know, whatever. it's just yeah. fun and it's yeah. just positive and it just, you know, it's got momentum and people are engaged and 
it every you know there's nobody that that you know it, it doesn't give anybody the opportunity to say oh I you know do this better than you or you do this better than me sure. or you know whatever like sure. I, it's just I mean it's it's it, I I just the 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 vision the mm-hmm. you know or, or and 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 let me be very clear I mean you know vision sometimes is um, a word used after the fact you know I mean mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times you say oh this would be really cool I'm gonna <laughs> throw this against the wall and see if it sticks and then later everybody's like oh you were a visionary or, <laughs> and I, to take nothing you know away from from Matt or anybody else but like I, you know. I've never seen anything like this. No. I, I've truly never seen anything that you know. There, there's everything coming from this, like all the interactions and 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 people getting together and people trying. You know, I mean, it, it's just it's a really remarkable and and positive and just a freaking cool thing. Doesn't it make you feel like you're not just a little blip anymore? Like every now and then something happens and you're like, oh. There, there is this greater awareness of, <laughs> yeah, of what I mean, we're doing, also, which is kind of nice. No, I, I 100%. But it's also <laughs> like there's you – know, this can all be more than, you know, me trying to justify my ability to say this – I give this bourbon a particular rate. Like, let's do something different. Yeah. Like, let's do, let's do, let's do something 100%. more fun. Let's, yeah. let's, let's engage other people. Like, let's do something that nobody else has done. Mm-hmm. And, and he did this. I mean, he, you know, he orchestrated it, man. Well, and the <laughs> crazy shit on the side of that bottle is, you know, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. You know what I mean? Like, I, it, look, man. Just hearing the name Old Charter Distill her. Yeah. <laughs> just beautiful. Just so well done. I mean, all of it. I all just, of it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It, to, to be a part of it, I, I, I have, again, I have no idea. Um, I, and, and like with most things in my life, um, I'm confident that I was at least the fifth or sixth person they approached. You know, like I was option number <laughs> at least five or six. Um, you were behind Harlan Wheatley. Yeah, I mean, was everybody was Rutledge, like, pass, who was pass, Jimmy pass, Russell. pass, yeah. pass. And they're yeah. like, okay, well, I know we can find that sucker <laughs> Dixon. <He'll, laughs> that, that guy will do anything. I'm sure that's, you know, it, it, which is fine. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be five or six behind those guys. You know, <laughs> Just, the equivalent of being a kid and going, "Hey, bend over and spell are you or spell uh, run," I, you know, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> anyway, this is yeah. Been- <laughs> I don't know where you're going. With that. I don't either. That, no, that, I don't. that made me nervous as hell. I don't, I, <laughs> no, man, I I think that you know it. It's a true testament to your ability to blend really good whiskey. You know, I, think I guess I, we'll see. Right? Yeah, we will find out. Yeah, but on that one. If we're talking on a macro scale, <laughs> that that's I think what we're what we're looking at. So, Matt, you've heard it here first. Dixon says he's excited to be a part of this. I am, and and also, um, do do we call him Future Matt? Uh, yeah, sure. Or future we just Matt. talk to him as Matt because you know, you talk to Future Perry. I'll be, it, I'll be Future Perry. We can talk to Matt. But he's like, just Matt. He's just Matt. He's right not now. Future Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's just okay. Yeah. Well, I came in from my my DeLorean. Did you not see it out in the <laughs> from 1985? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> hey, this is for Matt. No kidding. Just as a way of saying thank you. Okay, man. Um, I'm not gonna say right now what oh. it is. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. 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 So that I can uh I can break it out and really surprise him. This okay. is gonna be an episode full of surprises. Yeah. Um but he's uh I, I have a feeling he's gonna be pretty pleased yeah, that's for him. with it. Yeah. yeah. Dixon, thanks for sitting course, down with man. me for a little bit, buddy. Anytime. Yeah. Let's drink some more bourbon. Okay. All right. <laughs> Bye, future Perry and Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so what that bottle was was a uh, Kentucky Owl batch nine bourbon. Dixon wanted you to have that, man, b- just because he he loves so much what you're doing with 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 this and and the way that you bring the community together and everything. And um, I, I I will say, you know, having been able to sit down with him, 
and and see the excitement of but that he has for this project. I mean, he he really and truly wanted you to have this because of that. And uh <sighs> Uh, Dixon, thank you. Uh, if you ever listen to this, <laughs> um, I have a feeling he's going to. And honestly, so I, I talked about it then, but I really was hoping that I was I would have been able to get him here. And and I wanted to surprise you with with Dixon, and you know it just didn't it didn't work out and everything. But I and when when I texted him about it, mm-hmm. I said, "Hey, do you want to come? You know, when Matt comes in." Do you want to surprise him and, and sit down and record? And it was the same response that he gave when your 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 message went out. <laughs> he said, "I'm in." He said, "Absolutely." No, that guy's a he's a busy dude. I got uh... yeah. But in, instead, Al Batch Nine, man. And we had been talking too about you know at the end of all this we all come together and you know we get to hang out with each other and yeah that'd be pretty that that'll be awesome yeah um. I'm s I I didn't mean to make you cry, I'm sorry. Perry Dixon made me cry. You just <laughs> Okay, fine. You yeah, just provided I, the media. All I did was just deliver the <laughs> <laughs> the bottle to you. No, dude, thank you so much. That's uh It's weird, like I have a hard time talking about stuff. Yeah. I understand. It's really easy for me to be a goofball and to, to, I included Dixon because it had nothing to do with his whiskey collection or his. Yeah. And I, I realize now that it wasn't because of no it, what he could bring. No, but I mean, I can see that. Like I wanted Dix. Like I, I mentioned his. I didn't expect him to say yes. I mentioned his name, because. Just maybe he would say yes. No, no. There's way more to it, but I, I just can't say it without crying. Jeez, it's <laughs> like. I'm gonna write it on a piece of paper and have Perry say it for me. <laughs> Jeez, Louise, this is brutal. I am sorry if you're listening. <sighs> Um, no, I, I like, I, I always felt like more of a connection with his story. Yeah. <clears throat> and I know that like I, I wrote like a short snippet at one point in our, in our thread amongst everybody who's involved with Beagle Rare. <clears throat> He's a, he grew up in a, as a, <clears throat> In a family who, who had the uh, the the Beaumont Inn. I also grew up in a motel. Mm-hmm. Like I grew up in a family. Like I was. I was on the property, like interacting with guests, like seeing the. Seeing how hospitality works. Yeah. And then moving on from there, like. I ended up being a second generation innkeeper and I ran my parents' motel business for four years um, until it became a profitable business again and they were able to sell it. Yeah. So basically just going back to his story about Kentucky Owl, he, he wanted to make his, his grandfather proud. Yeah. The, the. I think he said that uh, his his grandpa his grandfather always told him like, when I won the lot when when, when I win the lottery. Uh, he's in re- he's in a I think he said buy a limousine, <laughs> and then, restart Kentucky Owl. And then when Dixon had his meeting with the distributors and it all went well, he, he had a cry with his dad because it happened. Like he did it. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> this will all come full circle. I promise. I, I think. I think it's I gonna, see where it's, it's going. No, it's gonna, so, my college career ended, although very late. It was many, many years of college. Like 
a thousand years of college. <laughs> I didn't know they let us go that long, but it was short. Um, I can't, I didn't finish my business degree. I didn't finish my, I didn't get my degree so I could go and, uh, rejuvenate my parents' hotel. It worked well. They were able to sell the property and be, you know, be out of, be out of the business, excuse me, so they could retire. They were, they were able to retire without having that over their head. Basically Every, everything went well and good. Well, when that sold, I thought finding a job would be easy. But it wasn't. It was, it was. It's been really hard. Like, I joke, I make jokes about being a bus driver because that's not what I ever envisioned myself being. And there's nothing wrong with being a bus driver. Like, it's a. It's I a, drive a bus. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do, Perry. But you're but you're more than that. Like that doesn't. So, basically. I never envisioned myself doing... I always expected more from myself. And, uh, you know, I'm still looking for more. So it's it's so weird because the Beagle Rare idea came to me when I was driving the bus. Like, mm-hmm. that's how it started. And uh, I never imagined myself driving to Kentucky to be on your podcast. It's like, <laughs> as cool as that sounded, like, there was absolutely no reason for that to ever happen. Yeah, but here you are. And that's crazy. And then in my head, I envision a time where something down the road is going to happen where I have that moment like with, with my dad and with my family. It's like, we did it. <clears throat> yeah. And it's still coming full circle because I always told myself, That one day I was going to buy a bottle of Kentucky Owl. And then when that moment happened where I was like, aha, like we did it. Mm -hmm. There's like, I can do more than what I'm doing now. Sure. Like, I I feel I have tools to, to do other things, but like, like there, there's something better for me out there. Something that can support my family and make me a better dad and a better husband. And, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking every day. And I'm, all I'm saying is, like, when that moment happens, I'm going to pop the cork off that song, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yell America and I'm going to celebrate. Like, I have a bottle of Kentucky Owl now from Kentucky Owl damn self. <laughs> my gosh. Like... What a cry, baby. Jeez. Put me on Oprah. Oh, man. Dickinson, you made me cry for 17 See, this, this is, hours. This is why I say it's so much more than just about bourbon. No, and like involving Dixon was never about bourbon. It was about me seeing his story and just becoming like... You connected with it. Big time. And yeah. being like... If you sent your comic book to Spider Man, Spider Man touched it and sent it back. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he made it any better. It's like he acknowledged it. He thought it was cool. And sent I it lo- back. I love that. By the way, that's <laughs> that's perfect. It's our point guard, Spider Man. <laughs> he was the he was the first and only choice. Um, if he would have said no, then I would have. Lost 140 pounds, dressed up in a nice suit and tie, pretended like I was Dixon Deadman, <laughs> and just stuck with Kentucky Howell, because, you know, it m- makes sense. Well, anyway, um, wow. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to include this bit to make you cry. Yeah, nailed it, though. But it certainly happened, and quite honestly, <sighs> I'm... Is it weird to say I'm not sorry? No, I mean, because it's, it's this po- is it. This is what is important to me: is mm-hmm. that we're able to in, indulge in this experience together. There was no like. There was no vision, like like yeah. you said. There's no, but it's part of that story. Yeah, absolutely. Like, 
this bottle was thought up by some guy driving a bus wanting something better. And that's it. Like, after he said, after Dixon said yes and everybody else said yes, then I was like, oh, it looks like I got to make up, like, at least a halfway decent <laughs> label. And so what, with the label, I just, I made a label. I, I obviously borrowed some sort of font and other things <laughs> from people who may have had it before me. And I'm, I made a label and then I wrote old charter on it and I was about to send it out. Mm-hmm. And then I said, that doesn't even make any sense. There's literally nothing else in the bottle that says charter. <laughs> So about 20 minutes before I sent the bottle out in the mail, I wrote the old charter story. <laughs> I was like, how, what does, what does charter even mean? I was like, how can you, I like it, but, but it doesn't mean anything. So the whole, uh, Edward trailer, <laughs> Beagle rare, <laughs> old charter distillery. And if you want to hear all that in full, so many of the other whiskey tubers have gone through and read that and, and everything, but you know, that, that's not this bottle is here, and we will try it together. Oh, my gosh. We haven't even got there yet. We haven't even gotten there yet. We, That's we're it. seven hours in. <laughs> I cried for six of You don't them, understand how much editing I've done on this podcast. <laughs> no, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to try this together. Future Perry's mad because Future Perry's Future editing. Perry is probably listening back to this and also crying. Dude. Oh, my gosh. I almost broke that. <laughs> we, I, we, I have but, a bottle of Kentucky Owl Bourbon Batch Nine. Can I? I've never, I've never seen a bottle of this. This might be fake. It might be. I would not know. It is one hundred percent real. <sighs> it's. It doesn't smell like Dixon. I'm just joking. I know. I'm kidding. I'm joking. You don't have to prove nothing. I was completely kidding. Oh, you got a fake too? <laughs> yeah, I actually. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, this is, this is, this is something that, okay, I know that bourbon's supposed to be drank, and it, like, I, I, my, 95% of my bottles are open. Yeah. But this song, bitch. It can stay closed as long it as it needs to. It is going to be, I'm going to enjoy, oh, I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it oh so hard, but I'm going to enjoy it when I deserve it. Well, after we we drink some Beagle Rare, I do have a, an open bottle, courtesy of Dixon, that I would love to try with you as well to close out the show. I will not tell you no, even we though will, we will do it's that. It's a very expensive bottle. It is like <laughs> that. The okay, I know that thing is so pretty. Like it's a it's a hoot, <laughs> a hoot and a holler. So I just, it, it was important to me because you, you were coming into this, this space, right? Where, you know, I got to talk to you about this and I, I, I want you to know too, that this is such a big thing for our community right now. And there's going to be more, by the way. Yeah, right. I mean, this is the first year of Beagle Rare. I, oh, I have, or, or whatever the blend's going to be called I have, afterwards. I have some cool ideas I'll share with you. It might be off air because yeah, otherwise we'll do, we'll we'll do, do that all night. Air. So, yeah, but yeah, this it ain't over. <laughs> ain't no, it ain't over. But it it was important to me to let you know that this has not gone unnoticed. That's super cool. And and Dixon did that to the umpteenth degree. And I, I really do wish that he could have been here to tell you that himself, but my goodness, I would have just, I probably remember how I told you I have an enlarged heart. If I walk in and you and Dixon are here, I'd be like, how, how close is the nearest hospital? <laughs> you, I mean, this is a big subdivision. It'd take a while to get there. We would get, we would get there though. I, no, I'm just saying that they, as awesome as that would have been, it's not like he's sitting at home twiddling his thumbs. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, Perry, thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Like for you to facilitate that is okay. First of all, that's a gigantic word for me. And I think I used it right. <laughs> you definitely did. <laughs> I blacked out what happened. Um, <laughs> but thank you. That's 
Absolutely. Really man. Generous, kind, just a business. That's not a word, but I wanted to throw it in there. I, I love Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. So, how about some Beagle Rare? Oh. I want to find out what you think about this bottle now that it's gone through its paces of how many were we up to? Eight different channels yeah nine yeah i believe so i'm not even sure at, at this point but and no nobody half arsed it either <laughs> no nope. but you also brought the the original blend too which i want us to do side by side that is a great idea i think it's so i i want to i want to go back a second too because yeah. I, I forgot to mention this we got so so into we could talk for five episodes we very well might at this point but so the the way that the other Russells came about that Dixon and Jamie picked. Yeah. That is actually one of the barrels that they so every year they do what they call their birthday pick. That's their birthday that's, that's their birthday pick. I've heard all about that. Yeah. So we're we're sitting at the Beaumont Inn before recording that that little 20 minute bit. Mm-hmm. And I had I had a, a Russell's bottle. It was the BHG one that we just tried. Mm-hmm. I I had it sitting there, and he was like, "Are you gonna Are you gonna drink that with Matt?" And I was like, "Actually, more than likely, yeah." And he was like, "Well, hold on." Uh-huh. He goes over to his cabinet. It's the cabinet that he's got locked, and so he's got the specific key for it and everything. He was like, "When you record with him, mm-hmm. you guys try this right on air." And I was like, well, we're doing that right now, too. Sure. And so it it was all, I, I would say it was well orchestrated, but at the same time, it wasn't because it all just kind of happened so organically. And like, it you was know, a, it and, was a roller coaster of emotion. And <laughs> I'm reserves. still I'm still feeling it. But like, oh, I'm going to feel that probably in three weeks. My tear ducts are just aching. <laughs> but no, that's cool. Like, that's. Yeah, I've, I've heard the, the birthday bottle story and I. That is, that might be, I'm sorry, Perry. I know you picked the other one. No, 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 no. That bottle is, it blew me away. I was like, no, I, I, it is one of of the best Russell's picks I've ever had. So, and I did, again, I didn't pick the the other one myself. There was a team. I know. I picked with. And it's not even like you you didn't distill it and age it in your warehouse either. You just. (laughs) You just tasted it and said it was good. So, I mean, but no, like that's a lights out pick. That's probably one of the best bourbons I've, I've ever had. I will not disagree with you on that. So we'll go. Um, oh, you're doing the wrong glass. We're going left to right, old to new. I mean, you can switch whatever you want. I don't care. I just hit Perry's button. <laughs> That's, that's, I have a weird OCD about orders. I just found that out. <laughs> you know what? I think I just found that out with you, Matt. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> are these glasses identical? Woo, no, I just um, I, I need think, I need a moment. I'm sweating same? now, and I need to come down from that. W- that. Worst case scenario is I've got to put this glass right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. And I'm very sorry about that. No, <laughs> oh, totally cool. I'm surprised you haven't kicked me out yet. I would have probably called the police already. Oh man. This is what I made. And the other is what everybody what else everybody else has decided they're going to Here. Then you have enough do. to for the end so you can sample uh yes. when it's all done. Oh. And sample I will. And I definitely like I I'm I'm probably gonna wind up Taking a little bit out of the 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 current blend as well, just for the sake of comparison. And there were very few rules, but and yes, I'm uh, the majority so, of the rules are sorry, make sure that as much as you sorry got to discipline in, you again, Perry. But America, <laughs> I'm sorry, we we got awfully deep into the uh, too deep for your country. Not at all. All right, and this cork, this cork, by the way, stood up. So, it really did. And I'm I'm surprised that you didn't go with the uh, with synthetic <laughs> synthetic instead of uh, as opposed to the the regular one. I don't know. The bourbon works, man. It wasn't part of my vision. We've had a lot of things going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's a callback. Also, know, I just want to say I just now noticed 
Well, not now, but in the middle of uh, listening to past Perry and past Dixon, yeah. um, that you're wearing the Neighborhood Spirits Competition shirt. Oh, it's totally legit. <laughs> Neighborhood Spirits Competition, double goal, baby. Winner, winner, chicken winner, dinner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, the, the Big Rare bottle, it holds that title of double gold. It does. Yeah. Um, some of the judges were not... Uh, they they didn't agree with its with its standing as double gold, but oh, that's right. Wasn't one of them um, an ascot wearer? Hypothetically. Oh, okay. Uh, what's what are other words that mean uh, fictitious, fake, not real, but definitely happened? I like the word sure <laughs> <laughs> because so, it just ends the conversation. <laughs> supposedly, Schmedschminnick. Sh- didn't Schmitt, didn't Schmitt really Schmitt like Spiegel Rare, but the other judges who were named Benjamin Franklin, <laughs> they were able to persuade him to award Beagle Rare the double gold. So I have in my hands, in my left hand, as I wanted us to both do, as we found out my OCD dictated, uh, is the original blend of Beagle Rare. And in my right hand is the current blend which has gone through many, many paces. Most recently, the podcast, where they added Rhetoric 24 year. Yeah, there's in this blend, there's a, there's a whole slew of different things that were added. Um, notably, E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof, Lot 40 Cask Strength, uh, Booker's Rye is in here. I would say that they they smell... They smell like the same kind of DNA... Bourbon? Yes. They <laughs> yeah. smell like bourbon. No, but they, they, they seem to definitely have, like, you, you can tell that things have changed a little bit with the, the, the current blend. Yeah. But I think that when you really compare the two, they they smell like they could have come from the same distillery. Old Charter. Yeah, they did. Yes, they did come from the same distillery. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right. But, yeah, I mean, at Old Charter, they've, They've been known to blend some great the stuff. The current blend is a lot hotter on the nose. It's hotter, and it's also has a, I think, like a deeper aroma. Like I, if you were to, I could, I could agree with that. And the original blend, I believe, is actually, I don't know if, what you mean by hotter, but I think that the original blend is more stringent. Like it smells more like a. Interesting. Right now, we are just smelling bourbon. And you are listening and loving it. You know what? You didn't tune in for. Uh... <laughs> here. We're not. We're not talking about. Apparently, we were going to originally talk about uh, monster trucks, but okay. we're not here to talk about monster trucks. If you, if the listeners are paying attention, I'm holding up the original blend to the microphone right now. Just take a big whiff. You smell that? That's the original. Okay, now get some fresh air, and then okay, now the new blend is being held up to the microphone. Take a smell and see what I mean. A little bit different. Mm. So, of of course, having seen the the original go to who was the first one that that got this? I'm uh, I'm sorry, um, the Bourbon Junkies. The Bourbon Junkies. Thank you. Wow. Okay, the original's not bad. No, I think it's really good. But they, I, I, if I remember correctly. Their initial criticism was that the finish was a little bit short. No, I think that they, um, they said it had a good finish. the 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 second, it, the second reviewer mentioned the finish. I think they said that, and that was Bourbon Sane. They said that the right. the palate was a little bit lacking, but it had a very yeah. Bourbon Sane had a second. Bourbon Junkie said the palate was a little bit lacking, but the finish was had a decent finish, and they wanted to add some like floral notes or something to it. Um. I don't know. That's, I kind of see that. Like, there's not a lot going on. No, but it is still quite pleasing. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm drinking it, and I'm not. There are no adverse reactions to it. I mean, I'm going. This is really tasty, and and, and I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So what you're saying is not bad for a bus driver. Not bad for a bus driver. All right, nailed it. Got the pear bear seal of approval. Ooh, that could be a real thing. <laughs> Bottled in, no. No, bottled in fraud. <laughs> <laughs> approved by the 
the P- PBC, yeah, Air Air Commission <laughs> <laughs> committee, <laughs> PBC. It is still hot though. Yeah, and it I is. think that's what it, it can, kind of consistently. Everybody said it is really high proof, and it drinks really hot. Mm-hmm. And it's still kind of like on the finish. Well, not really even on the finish, just as it's kind of lingering in my mouth. It feels like I'm kind of breathing fire. <laughs> it's it. The original. I'm feeling like a. It's it's just evaporating off the it's back of my. It's very tongue. cinnamony. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. There's a. It's like a trident sugar free cinnamon. I, I I mean honestly, yeah, that's yeah, <laughs> that's I, not wrong. Not to be confused with extra, which is different. It's Trident. www.trident.com. Speaking of fruit, though, the nose on the the current blend, apples. I think it's very fruity. I don't even know if it's apples. Oh, it is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but what kind of apple are we talking? Fuji? Are we talking uh, um, something that's not Fuji? <laughs> It's a red delicious. Okay. Hybrid. Granny Smith. Hybrid. What's the worst kind of apple? Uh, rotten. Rotten apples are the worst. Don't. And the best? Ripe. Okay. <laughs> We're done. Great conversation. Uh, don't you love it when people are like, okay, I'll be, I, I, there are some times where I'm like, that smells like a red apple. Mm-hmm. But like, when people get super specific and they're like, ew, it's a. Apple you've never heard of because I'm sophisticated. Because they go to a different school. Yeah. Oh, I went to Trader Joe's yesterday, and I learned about apples that came from Apple Land you've never heard of. They were in the back room, allocated apples. You have to ask for them by name, but you don't even know the name. Matt, current blend is currently... Going down my esophagus and pleasing me. It's ridiculously good. Okay. Um, uh, I those don't taste anywhere near the same thing. They're well because they're not. Again, well, no, they're not. But again, like we're we're going back to our our flying blind, comparing the nose to the the palate. Mm-hmm. I don't think that the nose on this really matches up with the palate. I think the palate is a lot. Like like more savory, yeah yeah. But the nose is so full of those rich sweet notes, mm-hmm. and it's this is how. What am I supposed to do with this now? Like it's gone through so many different people, and it's so good right now. To to be honest, there's really nothing that it's not about that. It's not about having to make it better. No, I want to do something. Oh no, well, okay. Here, no, listen. Here's the deal. Some people got the bottle and they knew what they were going to put in it before they even got the bottle. So you're that's fair. You're wearing a lab coat and goggles. You have graduated cylinders, beakers, and funnels. You're taking it very seriously, and I appreciate that. Because I want this, and I know that it's got more people after me. Oh, I thought you meant after you, like you were like. They were coming out to get you. <laughs> no, there are a lot of people who are after me right now, but I'm not allowed to talk about that on air. Who's to say my name's even really Perry? Anyway, it's not. Um, it's Terry with a P. <laughs> no, but it it's so good right now. But I do agree that it is hot. And I want to find a way to kind of curb that and, and make it a little bit more delicate, right. I guess. While still being really flavorful. Since we're being scientific. Sure. I don't think that it's proof hot. I think that it's it's gra- it's gra- graduated to rye, rye spice on the back yeah, of the I tongue. Think so it's too. very rye heavy. And there's been some rye added lately. Um, Booker's rye, Lot 40 cask strength, and Michter's barrel strength rye have all been added recently. Which is really giving it that kick. Can I'm I like, tell you I'd... something that's not in there? Sure. And this is not a... This is not a what's the right word? Suggestion? Oh, why did that come? That took a while to come up with a suggestion. <laughs> um, but like I said, the bourbon works. It works. There's a nobody's added a weeded a weeded bourbon. And I was kind of thinking about doing a weeder, and I might wind up doing this Weller foolproof. But I also like. 
That's this your, this that's is your bottle, baby. That, you do what you want with it. This is where things get really muddy for me. It's like it it it's also been a while, really, since the initial blend that there's been anything dusty in there. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And and dusty bourbons are so mellow but still provide a lot of flavor. So I kind of was thinking maybe do something that's special to me and use my birthier turkey bottle, right? But at the same time, I don't know if that's going to be right. And so like that's why I want to do these these kind of tests sure, where I have different glasses for different blends. That's It's fun. It's experimental. You're learning. Exactly. And there's an excuse to drink bourbon. As Dixon said, three three plus one doesn't always equal four with bourbon. No, not at all. But it's it's also kind of cool because people who are consuming this on a daily or weekly or whatever basis, they're expecting like they're waiting for the next batch of whatever to come out. This new Kentucky Owl batch. Mm-hmm. They drink it and they say Batch nine wasn't as good as batch seven, or I like batch six more than batch eight, or yeah. but like they don't know how hard it is to fix it until now. <laughs> like there, that's I know true. That, like um, people aren't necessarily trying to trying to meet a profile. Like Dixon Bat just mixes something different each time. Yeah, but people who are like um, Elijah Craig or something, it's impossible to make the same thing every time. You're blending different stuff. So in order to get more oak or more this or more that. Oh, yeah. It, it's really an experiment for everybody to see how difficult that is. Yeah. And, but that's I, why I, I want to take so I'm much more time with it. I'm is... surprised it's even good. <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, not saying that people, the, the, the folks who have had it before me haven't, they don't have great palates because they really do. But like so much of it has just been like throw it throw it at the wall and see what okay. sticks. Exactly. But do you remember the Real Housewives? You put a bunch of hot chicks in a house and you expect them all to get along. It doesn't work out. It's a big mess. They're My fighting. reference was going to be The Bachelor, but uh, you know, same thing. <laughs> same thing. But same thing. Anyway. There's a bunch of hot chicks in this bottle, and for some reason, all they did was just get hotter on the palate. <laughs> you really saved it there. And Perry's <laughs> trying to cool him off. That's cool. And then I'm thinking like He's trying to throw an old chick in there, an old turkey. Yeah. I'm going to refrain from what I was going to say. But like then I'm thinking like, you know, I've got specific blends that I've made. Yeah. Do I want to throw something in like that? But, you know, that's not it does does that kind of go with the whole theme of it and like i'm just not sure that's why i really want to just just take the time to make this you know at, at this point my own and that's what it is I'm it's so, it's so awesome this, because man. if you go back and you watch all the videos of everybody who's had this bottle everybody has had a different approach mm-hmm. everybody is different everybody's content is different and then just the way they view it is, is different so, I'll, so uh, I'll be honest with you too i don't I don't have any problem with like knowing what else has gone into it. Right. You know, like everybody's like, Oh, if you're, if you're getting this bottle next and you know, you don't want to know what goes into what, but why would you not want to know? I mean, like, I feel like that should kind of shape your decision. Sure. Um, at first I think that it was more like a, just like a a challenge for someone to taste something and be like, Oh, this is what I think about it. Mm hmm. More like a blind thing. Yeah. Um, as it progressed, like I, I don't know the proof of it right now because. Oh, it's gone I, through a lot of. Yeah, it, it's around <laughs> it's around 110 proof, but yeah. it it drinks hotter than that. It drinks it drinks like 120 plus. To yeah. Me. Uh, so it, it it with that in mind, is a lower proof bourbon the right move? There's so many variables with this, and I, I'm I'm so freaking excited to you know, get my own spin on it. But if you calm this puppy down <sighs> a little bit, it's still going to drink like it's over hundred proof. Oh yeah. Like there's no, Oh yeah, absolutely. You, you'd have to decapitate its head off its <laughs> shoulders for it. To, you, um, 
We're just going to go ahead and stop talking about that. <laughs> just in that make... sentence right there. Sometimes I just have to stop. Well, by the by the time that I fill this bottle back up. Look how dark where that I got is. it from. No, it's 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 a beautiful color. <sighs> it's, it's just straight amber. I want my children's hair to be that color. It's a beautiful <laughs> darkish fake red. <laughs> I hope you have beautiful children. I do. Beautiful athletic children. <laughs> They'll go to the Olympics. <laughs> they will get bronze because that's what their dad would do. Except for not the Olympics. Like first J, J Junior High. That's much better than I did with with school sports. But anyway, I like by the time that I, I actually fill this back up, I mean it's probably gonna wind up with what, like three or four ounces? Because we just had about an ounce or so a piece. Yeah. And, you know, knowing, I, I just, maybe I'm, I think I'm too in my head. Here's the thing. With this. You're, uh, you're overthinking it. And here's the deal. Nobody cares. <laughs> like, but you know who cares? Me. Okay. Me. I care. And I want this to be so good. If you were like. This has a, a point behind it. <laughs> Matt, this is going to somebody who cares about it. Oh, we all care about it. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, at the end, it's if going you, to... If you drink through the entire bottle trying to figure out how to make it better... Wouldn't that be God funny? bless you. <laughs> you, like, yeah, you <laughs> tried. <be> great. <laughs> you tried really hard. I've got two ounces left, and I'm just filling it up with uh, Weller's... <laughs> Weller's specials. <laughs> An- ancient age. 80. The regular ancient age. No, I, I, I want to do this the right way. And for me, that means being meticulous with it. So I'm going to do that. And, you know, like I've been saying, there's going to be a, a video on YouTube, youtube.com slash this is my bourbon podcast. I already liked it. Art, <laughs> already thumbs up, already subscribed, well, already commented below, it, already hit the bell notification. <laughs> I'm on top of this. Hopefully, it, when, when this episode comes out, it will actually be on YouTube. And I, I, I'm, if I'm planning everything right, it will be. So, you hear that life? He's already planned it. Do not get in his way. Don't screw me up, man. <laughs> do not screw me up. But I, I'm I'm going to you know I'm going to do this the right way. And then and then Chad and Sarah are going to get it. Yeah, that's right. Chad and Sarah are going to get it. And, and then they're just. How about a Knob Creek single barrel? <laughs> Which hmm. is fine. Chad's going to taste you it. Guys, do Chad's going to taste it and go lacking nuts. <laughs> Not nutty. Any do, do we have PB2, hon? Do we have that PB2 powder? <laughs> oh, what if somebody put screwball in it? Is that allowed? It's certainly allowed. But it, it's I a mean, flavored whiskey. It's not bourbon or rye. It's it's not allowed. I mean, I... <laughs> <laughs> you turned so quickly. Well, okay. I don't think anybody... Who, my I was concerned when Grease got a hold of it. For several reasons. Do you think he was going to put the, reasons. the beaver's butt, beaver butt in it or whatever it's called? Um, I don't know. I wasn't like super concerned about like that. I just was, thought he was just going to throw it through a window or something. But Why are you reaching into your brown bag? That's you, beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the gym? No, that's an Ezra Brooks it's, decanter. It's 1972, 12 year Ezra Brooks. The beaver. It's got real. It's got juice in it. And sealed. Signed, sealed, delivered. What? Wait, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. What? what? Why am I holding this? It's yours now. It's, no. it's... <laughs> Are you freaking kidding me? No. Dude. 12 years old, 90 proof old Ezra Brooks? Holy moly, Matt. I'm guessing it's going to taste a little woody. It's, <laughs> it's got a beaver on it. He's already gnawed through some of it. I bet it will taste damn fine. So I <laughs> I decanted a a year prior to that when it was like 150 months. And it didn't turn out that well. It tastes more like Sherwin Williams than Evan Williams. <laughs> but... I I I have I think this is going to be a Dude. promising one. So this is why I needed to have a receptacle. Yeah, because I was going to I didn't know that we were going to talk for 7 hours. I didn't either. 
I thought that we were just going to, you know, get in, get out, and be done. I, I also but... brought a circular saw in case we needed to get into it. <laughs> Not joking. It's in my bag. I'm ready to rock and roll. I believe you. Dude. Thank uh, you so much. Heck this yeah. is. <sighs> that is courtesy of Rhinelander, Wisconsin, where apparently every single decanter ever created went to. This thing sounds full, too. It is full, yeah. It's full full to the tusks. <laughs> is that what beavers have? Do beavers have tusks? I, was, I almost said gills, and that wouldn't have been... <laughs> whatever tusks is, is closer. I don't have words for this. Thank you so much. My goodness gracious. It, who knows if it's going to turn out okay or not, but it's... Uh... I don't care. It just... Just the fact that I'm sitting here recording an episode of the podcast and you're in the background of this photo that I'm taking. <laughs> but you said, uh, you mentioned the beaver gland stuff, and I was like, oh, perfect segue into a beaver decanter. That just... Now, promise me one thing. Yes. You know the first rule of decanting, right? You watched my decanting video. Yes. What's the first rule of decanting? Oh, shoot. oh he didn't watch it. It's okay. Okay. First rule of decanting. Yes. Don't tell yourself decant. Tell yourself decant. decant. Yeah, that's right. Uh I remember that now. Yes. Thank you. Well, we will decant this maybe while you're here. Oh, okay. Well, you know, that's tonight. (laughs) Let's do it. We can do that. Yeah. So this has just kind of been a, you know, a, a mishmash of different conversations and everything this episode but here's the thing when you i feel like we're friends who haven't talked in a long time we just have a bunch of stuff to talk about we, we really do i got a i got a beaver in a paper bag <laughs> that no nah, nah, so. nah, i'm saying <laughs> get it because nah yeah i get it i get oh, it geez, i quit but i get it your computer i i think i may have given it viruses with bad just ter- <laughs> terrible content <laughs> ransomware well i figure we'll we'll go ahead and wrap everything up but before we do Ooh. we do have tips and bits tips and bits. where we recommend things it doesn't have to be bourbon related but it can be if you are interested it can be bourbon related it can be it bourbon related be. i have a couple things okay um first of all if you do enjoy bourbon and i hope you do otherwise you just went did you click on the wrong show you just wanted to hear a fat guy try which is okay. If it makes you feel better, shed some tears, didn't I? Well, One or my two. tips and bits, Perry. If you're interested in bourbon, the bourbon community on YouTube is growing. It's really, yes. it's kind of a cool, cool little community. But um, I say if you had to check out uh, one channel just to kind of get into things, go over to the Bourbon Junkies. Uh, Dan and Sean, they're a couple of really, really cool guys. They're very super generous. They're awesome. They they review whiskey. They just have a really good time. And um, if you want to support some people who are just really awesome guys, go over to Bourbon Junkies on YouTube. They are fantastic. My other bit, because that was a tip, the bit of the tip would be Perry is making noises with his nose. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it was like... <clears throat> <laughs> that's what I heard in my earphones. And that's those, and that's those my ears making the noise. Um, vacation in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. It's beautiful. Lake Superior. Summertime. Don't go in winter. And we'll all have to go see Matt then if we... Yes, please. <laughs> no, Upper Michigan is fantastic and beautiful. And it reminds me a lot of... Um, a lot of this area, just okay, just north and lots more water. So Interesting. I'd say if you've never been, there's a lot to see and a lot to do, and it's somewhere you can go and just relax because your cell phone might not work. <laughs> I didn't even get a cell phone until 2017. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he was like, there's people who are on Instagram that really like bourbon. I like bourbon too, but I'm going to try to get in on that. That's what happened. <laughs> So I got a Nokia M4 Shyamalan. So you have a young daughter or two? I have two. Two I have young a, daughters. I have a two-year-old and a three-year-old. 
They're my life, man. They're they're the best. So this is maybe pretty well catered to young children, but Frozen Two. I thought you were talking about your out. podcast. No, no, no. <laughs> Frozen Two just came out. It's really good. <laughs> I saw it on opening night. <laughs> Lucy and I were like, "Do we want to go see Frozen?" And we we're like, "Is the music yeah. is the music good?" The music is not as good as the first one. How could it be? Well, I mean, look, I think the unsung hero of that movie is Love is an Open Door. For for me, for me, it goes, Let It Go, Love is an Open Door. Um, What's the one where they duet? Do you want to build a snowman? Uh, What's the one where they duet? Where they talk with the, it's like, that's what I was going to say. Oh, that's Love is an Open Door. That's what yeah. I said. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like we finished each other's... Sandwiches. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I love anyway, yeah. It, Frozen 2 is really good. I really enjoyed it. it, which is just... I never thought that I was going to say that out loud, <laughs> but it's it's good. It's a really good time. And then also, we did also, watch... Also, some murder movies on it. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I, we did watch uh, the new Lady and the Tramp that's on Disney+. Plus. There's a new one? Yeah, it's a uh, quote-unquote live action. Oh, wait, well, yeah. I think that was on at my house the other night. There's so much stuff. There's... Yeah, there's a lot of content out there right now. YouTube is a big, scary place. Yeah. And before you know it, there's toddlers watching grown men in orange <laughs> suspenders play in bounce houses. I don't know what you're talking about. His name's Blippy. I thought we were going to be talking about um, Ryan's World. Or Blippy whatever. drives a Lamborghini because Blippy makes a lot of money. Blippy's making more money than Pear Bear is. I, I saw your <laughs> I saw your Lamborghini, and it's not a Lamborghini. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube videos, though, um, this will be my last one. Um, so I, I've talked about how good uh, the Watchmen series on HBO is. And uh, Screen Crush on YouTube has some really good breakdowns. If you've been watching Watchmen, who watches the Watchmen, Matt? Um, men. But if, men if, do. If you've been watching Watchmen and you want to kind of get a little breakdown, a recap of what, uh, what was happening during the episodes, um, they've got fantastic Easter egg videos. So go and watch those. Very, very cool. That about does it for this week's episode of the Smart Bourbon Podcast. Matt? That was... That was- I blacked out. I remember I, think... I remember drinking. I remember crying. <laughs> I remember laughter. I remember peeing my pants. And then I remember it drying up. Well, that's just a basic week of the show. For sure. Um, <laughs> hey, can I... Have you met Swan? <laughs> I have not. You need to. I do. Yeah. Is he hissing? Is he... Never mind. No, those are bad. geese. Can I plug my YouTube channel real yes, quick? Yes, please. That was what I was about to say oh. is uh, go ahead and uh, plug whatever you want to. I Oh, I know. You're so, you're, I wasn't thinking of myself at all. Um, yeah, you can find me on YouTube at ADHD Fishing. Yeah, that's Fishing, ADHD Fishing. <laughs> I just figured why change it. If It's about whiskey. It's about bourbon. It's about just fun and whiskey and bourbon, but it says ADHD fishing because I'm hooked on bourbon. <laughs> Boom, roasted. Oh, I get it. Get it. Or something. I get it. Yeah, you get it. Also, ADHD <laughs> fishing on Instagram. Uh, my phone number is. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep Harry here all night. That's all. We've got uh, more to do. More to drink. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you want to follow up with me personally, I am at Reader 1492 on all social media channels. If you want to follow up with the show, it is at My Bourbon Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. As we said at the top of the show, if you could give us a five-star rate and review on iTunes, that would be fantastic. It really does help new people check out the show and find out that uh, you know other people are, are listening to it and whatnot. If you have not yet joined our Facebook group, you can head to Facebook.com and search for This Is My Bourbon Group, and it is a really fun little community where we just kind of talk about bourbon and uh, what's going on with the show and everything in the, the, the news right now. Also, as I'm doing all these plugs, I'm slowly holding the uh, the beaver decanter closer and closer to me. It's warming it. So, yeah, it, it is quite cold. It is quite cold. 
It was in an automobile. <laughs> And it's cold outside. That's uh, all right. Bourbonshop.threadless.com is where you can find all of our apparel and merchandise for the show. Uh, there's some really cool designs that are up there. There are always new ones being added. So if you have not checked it out recently, definitely go back and see what is new over there. Our charity campaign, of course, is still going on at Movember.com. Uh, the link for that page is in the description of this episode. Uh, so if you are interested in that, just definitely, uh, check, check out that description. You know, it, it's, I, my words get worse and worse as I just, continue on. What he's basically trying to say is that Matt is going to eventually need some mental health support. And if you donate to November, it could potentially go to help support Matt's mental health. You know, and, and it, it helps me out too. It helps out with awareness of, of mental health and, you know, as I've said a thousand times, I make no no bones about it that, you know, for years I've dealt with anxiety and depression and, you know, it's just a part of my story. And I and it, by doing this, I wanted to, you know, help other people out. So there you go. Give him all your money. It's not me. It's Movember. Give Movember all your money. <laughs> Uh, and then last but not least, if you have not yet done, uh, become a patron of the show, you can head to patreon.com slash podcast for as little as a dollar a month. You can support the show financially, which really does help us uh, continue to do this show every single month, every single year, uh, and I guess every 100 episodes now that we're, you know, that far into it. And Give him all your money. <laughs> now it's appropriate to say that. All of it. Do it now. <laughs> Uh, to put it in the bag. Things are going to ramp up a little bit uh, come December 1st, so just a few days away. Uh, if you are on Patreon, be aware of that, and we're, we're really going to kind of dig down into uh, what makes that community so cool, and you know, you're really going to start seeing um, some benefits from being a patron over there. I think that does it for this week, Matt. I, that was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. Buddy, thank you so much for coming and hanging out. Thank with you for me. having it's, me here, dude. This is the coolest. It's the, coo- the coolest thing I've done in ever. Ever? Wow. It's the coolest thing I've ever done. Goodness gracious. And That's a lot I of pressure. And I have surfed 300 foot waves <laughs> with socks. Everything else is downhill from here. Yep. <laughs> well, on that note, this has been. Pff, that's not how I end this show. <laughs> it never does. You just. Uh, Well, on that note, my name is Barry, and this is my bourbon podcast.